Ethereum is on a crazy run. Ever since the COVID 2020 lows, when Ethereum was below $100, in about a year since then, Ethereum is over 20 times higher, over $2,000 now. And in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly why I think Ethereum is going to push even higher and what my price targets actually are. About two months ago, I released a video on Ethereum when the price was around $1,500, and I told you that I was targeting next around $2,070 as my secondary target. If you go back and watch that video, it's from February 7th, and I actually had this box drawn which caught our lows of Ethereum and predicted the next move extremely well. We actually did end up bottoming inside of this box right here and we pushed up to this green line almost perfectly to about $1,870 afterwards. I told you that if we broke through this green line that my next target was up here at this blue negative 01.618 around $2,070. If we look at this in hindsight now this is the exact same box that I had drawn back on February 7th about two months ago and it did end up catching the bottom as you can see and we went almost perfectly to this green negative 236 line right here we fell shy by maybe ten dollars and we didn't push through it on the first try but we did get a secondary push upwards that came short of this blue line by about thirty dollars but we did break two thousand dollars so if you had taken this trade two months ago from my previous video you probably made a lot of money off of the trade but anyways, let's dive into what's more important here and let's predict the next move on Ethereum because of course, me telling you in hindsight that the previous video was good is not gonna help you going forward. So let's really dive in and do some analysis here. Now, if you did watch that previous video or you've watched any of my previous videos before, you know that I love starting with empty charts when I'm trying to understand a full analysis on something. And so that's what I've done here with Ethereum. I have nothing on my chart anymore. I've deleted it all. I want to start completely fresh so that I'm not biasing my future thoughts on Ethereum. Now the first thing I do on empty charts is just draw simple support and resistance lines. These are what I would call technical analysis 101 and if you don't know how to draw these, I'm going to try and explain it in this video but I also have another video which should help you understand how to draw support and resistance lines. I would definitely recommend you check that out. They are the fundamentals of technical analysis and without understanding them, you're at a pretty distinct disadvantage when trading. And furthermore, if you do understand them, you can actually trade just off of these support and resistance lines and be a profitable trader. So let's dive in. All I'm going to do is I'm going to look for peaks and valleys in the market, spots where the price has peaked, such as this one, and I'm going to simply hover my mouse over these areas and see if in the future, when we came to this exact same price level, did we struggle to either break through it to the upside or if we were already above it, did we use it as support and fail to break below it to the downside? So you can see even this spot that I'm hovering right now, this very first one that I just pointed out to you, you can see if you look to the right of where my mouse is at all of these other spots, it was definitely a key support and resistance line throughout. And if I draw the pink line, it might even help. So now that I have this line on my chart, you can see that we came up and tested this spot right in through here. And we did come a little bit through it. That's okay. We ended up falling below. So it was clearly a helpful spot of resistance through here to help price not break through. Same exact thing happened through here where we came a little bit above it, but we fell through again. Same thing through here where we're hovering around it, a little bit above it, fell through again. And finally, when we did break through it and above maybe some of these other resistances up here, as I'll draw in a second, price rocketed upwards. Now on the way back down, when we came down to it, you can see almost perfectly within a couple of dollars, we nearly hit this pink line once again and bounced back upwards multiple hundred dollars. And even on the secondary try to break through it, again, we came a little bit through this line, but we used it as support once, twice before going upwards and I have not been able to break downwards below this support. The bulls are waiting at this level to buy Ethereum and it's very clear because every time we get there, price is rebounding heavily. So that's the idea behind these support and resistance lines. I'm gonna draw just a couple more into my chart of key ones that I think will influence price in the future. In other words, if we come down to these pink lines that I'm about to draw, I believe that they will act as support or resistance if we're going up to them. So as I was hinting at earlier, I think there's another key resistance right through here because you can see we resisted it one, two, three, and when we came down, it was definitely support through here and all of this price action. And sometimes when I have two support and resistance lines so close like this, you can actually just turn it into a box, something like this, so that this whole zone is just going to be a support and resistance zone. Rather than dealing with just price levels that are the exact dollar and cents, 
Now we have this relative zone of about a $90 price range where if we were to ever come into this again, you can expect that there's tons of buyers inside of this area waiting to help push the price back upwards. Now whether you just keep those two pink lines and know that we either would support the first one or the second one and therefore there's going to be buyers all throughout that area or you draw this box, it's a bit more of personal preference and it doesn't matter too much as long as you understand the concept behind both of them. Let's draw some more key support and resistances through here. I see another one right here for sure as it's resistance and support through this area all through here and then through this bounce right off of here. Another one up here through this area of course and all of this. One more about $100 up over here as we resisted it once on the way up with a huge pullback. Resistance multiple times through this area and even through here. Again another one about $70 higher through there. And then our previous peak of our February moves where we first broke above $2,000. Of course, that's going to be some sort of resistance. We haven't really seen too much of it yet, but I'm still going to put it on my chart just in case. And I think that covers all of the key levels on the chart here. You could draw another resistance at our all-time high up here, but we only used it once so far and we haven't really pulled back too far off of it. We don't really know what's going to happen when we come up to it again. If we were to come up and reject that same exact price level again, then I would definitely have this top pink line drawn onto my chart. For now, I'm going to keep it clean. I already know that there's going to be resistance at all-time highs. It doesn't really help me to have another pink line up there, so I'll personally leave it off for now. And just one more time to reinforce the concept, the idea of these pink support and resistance lines I've drawn is that if price were to come downwards, and it's simply just an if here, because we don't know if price is going to come down to any of these pink levels ever in the future. Of course, I would predict that at some point, we'll definitely test one or more of these. But anyways, the concept is that if we do come down, if price does come down to one of these levels, we can expect at least some sort of small bounce off of the level, if not a permanent bounce up that continues us upwards. If we get a small bounce off of it, then maybe we would head down to the next support level where we'd have another bounce upwards where it has another chance of just continuing upwards afterwards or coming down to yet another level. At some point, we'd expect one of these support and resistance lines to catch our price and continue our uptrend, or if not, we'd have to start drawing in more levels that are below this one. For now, I'm not going to draw any levels below 1350 here because that's over $700 downwards. And if this does happen where we start to break through multiple of these support and resistance lines, and let's say price comes down to about here to 1550, that's when I would start adding lower ones on my chart just so I can have them ahead of time and be prepared. The next thing I'm going to do is use something called Elliott Wave Theory. Now again, if you haven't seen my previous videos and you don't know what Elliott Wave Theory is, I do have a very long playlist, about 10 videos on Elliott Wave Theory. It's a very complex theory, but in my opinion, it's the absolute best way to predict long-term movement in the market. Now just in case you know nothing about it, I'm going to give you a very quick overview. Remember that I have 10 videos on this, so it's extremely complex and I'm not covering even close to everything that you would need to know but I do want to give you a general idea. Elliott Wave Theory essentially states that the market trends in waves of five upwards, something that might look like this, and then afterwards we correct in waves of three, something that might look like this. Now all of these waves have waves inside of them, and so once you have this eight wave pattern, this five upwards and this three waves downwards, it actually makes another one, two on a larger degree where you continue another series of waves upwards. So this one, two that we have right here essentially just repeats itself on a larger scale. So inside of every one, two, we have this full one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C, this A wave structure. Now I could start an Elliott wave count from the beginning of time, from lows down here. However, for the sake of this video and for the sake of predicting future movement, I think it's enough to start from our peak right here and confirm that this movement is some sort of correction, which helps us believe that this price action that we're currently having from our February 28th lows in here around $1,300 is actually our next series of five waves upwards. So I'm going to dive into a one hour chart here and see if I can prove that this is some sort of correction following all Elliott wave rules and guidelines and then see if it makes sense that we're starting a new uptrend, a new five wave series from our lows in here around 1300. So in order for this to be the full correction, 
it needs to be labeled that ABC I was, I was talking about. Essentially, we'd be under the assumption that from some point back through here, we finished a five wave series or an impulsive move, and this is the ABC correction of that impulse before we have another impulse upwards, another five wave move. Now, if we just dive into this price action here, I think it's actually pretty clear that this is an ABC, and I'll show you exactly what I'm seeing. The first thing that you need to understand is that an ABC, as I said before, has waves inside of it. That A wave is actually made up of a five wave move itself, or sometimes a three wave move. The B wave is always made up of a three wave move, or it can be a triangle, but we'll ignore that for now. And the C wave move is always made up of a five wave move. In other words, we're looking for five waves downwards, three waves upwards, and then another five waves downwards. Let's see if we can count that out. From our very peak up here, our first one wave would be the very first push downwards. Our two wave would be the rebound of that, the retraction upwards. Our three wave would be the next push downwards. Our four, the next push upwards. And our five, the next push downwards. So I do believe this is an extremely clean five wave count right here. The next thing I see through all of this price action is a very, very straightforward and clean ABC upwards, which would look something like this, with an ABC right through there. And just to keep it clean, I'm gonna turn the wave off of my chart here, but you can still see where the labels are on the waves. And finally, our final push downwards, this is also a super clean five wave move. From our top right here, I see a one, a two, a three. This whole price action is our four, and this down here is our five. One thing that helps verify that this is our fourth wave is that it's actually a triangle, and triangles are very common in fourth waves. You can see that if we were to put some trend lines on this, and it would probably look better if we zoomed in, it definitely forms a triangle formation all through this fourth wave right here. So overall, I think this correction is actually extremely clean. We would label this overall correction, as I was saying, an A, B, C on a larger degree than the rest of it, because the waves that we drew before it are making up the waves of this ABC. We'll change the color of our ABC to yellow so you can see that better, and you can see that we have five waves in our A, three waves in our B, and five waves in our C here. A very clean looking ABC. In other words, I think that this marks the end of the correction from the 2040 high up here to the 1300 low down here. Of course, in hindsight, we can see that this is definitely true because price has moved upwards and put in new all-time highs, but it's still good to verify that this can be counted as an ABC and follow all Elliott Wave rules and guidelines. From here, I'm gonna delete the subways to keep my chart clean and we'll move forward. So now we're looking for yet another five wave move to start upwards. The count that I actually like for this looks like this. I think that our first push up to right here on a smaller degree is another one wave inside of here. I believe that this is an expanded flat two wave into here. So it labels as A down, B up here, C down. And in an expanded flat, it means that the B wave can come above the start of the A wave or the end of the one wave right here. So A, B, C. And then I think that our third wave is this next push up through right here. We put in a fourth wave correction through this flat looking correction right through here. And then finally a fifth wave on a very small degree right here. So let's quickly dive in and see if we can verify this five wave count right here. There are a couple different things we do with five wave counts to make sure they're valid and likely. The very first one is use a Fibonacci retracement tool. We're gonna simply pull from the bottom to the top of the one right here. And this tool is gonna measure retracement amounts. Now remember that this is the top of our one even though we had price action that went higher. I told you that this is likely some sort of ABC expanded flat right through here on a very small degree to make up the two wave here. So in this Fibonacci retracement tool, if it comes down to this red line, this 0.5, it essentially means that half of the distance from our bottom to the top right here has been retraced with our two wave. It means that we've pulled back half of that price action. And anywhere from the 0.5 or 50% retracement down to the 0.65 or 65% retracement is our most likely zone for a two wave. So you can see that we fall right inside of this huge zone that we would expect a two wave. This is extremely valid and likely. Now to verify our third wave, we use this trend-based Fib extension tool. 
This is going to measure the relative length of waves to each other. What we want to do is check the length of the one wave relative to the length of the three wave. More often than not, the three wave is 1.618 times the length of the one wave. So to use this tool, simply just click at the bottom of the one and the top of the one, and this is gonna capture the length of our one wave. So if we were to use our third click at the bottom of the one wave right here, you can see that pink 1.0 right there, which would be 100%, would measure where our one wave is the exact same length as whatever we're clicking on as our third click. So of course, if we use our third click at the bottom of the one wave, the pink 1.0 is gonna be right at the top of that one wave because we're measuring the length of the one wave to itself. Instead, let's use our third click at the bottom of the two wave right here and we'll pull sideways so we can see that on our chart. And as I said, this 1.618 is actually our most likely zone for a third wave, but it's not uncommon to see some of these smaller targets like 1.272 or 1.414. So our third doesn't quite make it to the target that we want to, but as long as it's longer than this 1.0, it's still valid and we can go with it. Next up, we're gonna use that same Fibonacci retracement tool to measure the retracement of our four wave. Now where two waves are supposed to fall between 50 and 65% retracement, four waves are meant to be shorter and they're supposed to fall from about 38.2 to 50% retracement. So let's click at the bottom and the top of our third wave right here and pull sideways. And our target zone for our fourth wave is this blue 38.2% line down to this red 0.5. However, it's not extremely uncommon for us to come just short of it. Even up to this 0.236 right here would not be crazy for a fourth wave. You can see that we don't quite make it to this 0.382 target, but we're very, very close. We're only a few dollars away, so this fourth wave is actually a really good measurement. And lastly, to validate our fifth wave, we'll go back to the trend-based fib extension tool, and the most common length for a fifth wave is for it to be equal the length of the one wave or 0.618 the length of the one wave. So let's grab the tool again and click at the bottom of our one and our top of our one here, and then at the bottom of our fourth wave room right here. Now, as I said before, this 1.0 is the most likely target. Unfortunately, we did not make it up to there on the fifth wave right here. This 0.618 is the second most likely target, and we're just a couple dollars above this target right here. So we're not quite at ideal zones for the fifth wave either, but we're not in unlikely territory at this spot right here. It's definitely still valid and we can use it. So we do have a valid five wave count right here. If you remember, what that means is next, we're looking for an ABC correction after it. And I think this one's pretty easy to see. We have a push down right here as an A wave. We have this sideways correctionary move right here as a B wave. And then finally, we have one more push down right here as our C wave, which clearly has a one, two, three, four, five inside of it as it requires. So once again, if we have a five wave move up, a three wave move down, it means that we formed a one, two on a larger degree. Let's draw that in. And now we're looking for that three, four, five on Ethereum. These are just placeholders for now. Let's turn the degree higher of this three, four, five. We're gonna change the color so that we can see it better. And now we're moving forward. We're looking for another five wave move inside of this third wave, a three wave ABC for the fourth, and a five wave move up for the fifth wave. Once again, I'm gonna delete these sub waves now that we've verified the one and the two, just to continue to keep my chart clean. Just as we did before with the smaller one, two in here with the fib retracement, before we move forward, I wanna do a fib retracement pull on this one, two as well, just to make sure that the depth makes sense. So I'll use my fib retracement tool from the bottom to the top of my one again and pull sideways. And you can see this one's actually perfect. I love when two waves fall inside of these two Fibonacci zones that I have right here at 0.618 to 0.65. We call this the golden zone. It's my favorite spot to buy a trade. As you saw at the beginning of this video, when you can buy inside of this golden zone, I do have a target at this green line as my first target. And of course, we've already hit that target now. This would have been an excellent trade as you would have bought around $1,550, targeting about $2,100, and you would have hit both of these targets just perfectly. If we can break through this green line, just from a Fibonacci retracement perspective, the next target would be this negative 0.618, again, as I showed you in my previous video from two months ago, which would be targeting around 2360 on Ethereum. If we go back to Elliott Wave now, though, we know that that third wave is most likely to be a 1.618 extension of our one wave. So let's use that trend-based fib extension tool once again, click on the bottom and the top of our one and the bottom of our two, 
And this zone up here is where I would be targeting our third wave to fall for Ethereum from about $2,600 to $2,700, somewhere inside of that range. Of course, now once we actually get there, we're gonna have that fourth wave that pulls back in some sort of ABC form like this, just like we've seen many, many times already. And then finally, we'll have a fifth wave that goes and puts in new highs relative to this third wave. And now we're in pretty hypothetical territory since we're predicting many things in advance here, but let's see where we might predict our fourth wave to fall with a Fibonacci retracement. So let's assume that our third wave falls inside of the middle of this box right up here. We'll pull a Fib retracement from the bottom of our two to the top of our hypothetical third wave here, and we'd be expecting our fourth wave to fall, as I said, around this 38.2 to 50% retracement into here. So somewhere around 2100 to 2200, we'll have a pullback to for our fourth wave. And then finally, our fifth wave, we'll go back to the trend-based Fib extension tool once again, measure the length of our one, put it at our hypothetical four location now, and we're expecting the fifth wave to come up to that 1.0, right around $2,800 in here. So future price action might look something like this, where we're headed upwards now into the middle of this box, we come down for this fourth wave, and then we come up here for our fifth wave. Now remember that once this fifth wave is in, we are gonna have yet another ABC pullback of this entire five wave move right here. So it will be a pretty deep correction, maybe even at or below $2,000 once again. So that's my future price prediction of Ethereum. I believe that we're gonna continue heading upwards to this $2,600 to $2,700 range to put in our third wave up here, have a pullback around 21 to 2200 for our fourth wave, and finally put in all-time highs once again, somewhere around this $2,800 to $2,900 range before we have a significant pullback that comes after that. So if you've made it this far in the video, I wanna thank you so much for watching and for supporting my channel. If you wanna trade stocks, options, crypto, or really anything else with me, I have a link to my Discord in the comments below. Feel free to come check that out and trade with hundreds of other people that are trading with me every single day. If you have any other questions or wanna see similar videos like this, let me know in the comments below. And if you like this video, do me a favor and click that like button below and hit subscribe for future similar content. This really does help me out a ton. I really appreciate your support and everything I post on this channel will help you become a better day trader. So once again, thank you so much for watching and as always, good luck trading.